another episode here in your 20s show. Uh, let me introduce this guy. He's a legend. When I mean legend, he's a legend. Doesn't really need an introduction, but I'm going to give it to you guys anyways. He is not only a music producer pro slash promoter. He's also a television executive. Bobby Tarantino, a legend. Welcome, man. Thank you for having me. This is this is really great. This is phenomenal. So we chopped it up yesterday, and um, yeah. Jillian filled me in a lot of what you've done, what you do, and you're still living the dream right now, which is phenomenal. Um, let me know how how did you get started in this business? You know, it's funny. I I've really been a professional since I was about thirteen, and. Uh, you know, the Beatles came out and all that, and they're obviously they're much older than me, but my friends and I, and you know, in junior high, we started a band, and we, we played professionally. I mean, they paid us, you know. It uh -huh. was really great. We were called the Cascades. Cascades. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was four of us, and um, one of the members of the band, the bass player, his name was Tom Van Dorn, we wrote songs, and so we would, we would play, you know, originals. Uh -huh. I mean, we'd play Beatles and whatever it was hot at the time, but we also would play our own songs, and the girls loved it, and we'd like that. Of course, of course. <laughs> and we, girls. And, um, and I went into high school, and then I changed members and, and all that, but I played at, you know, we were like 16, 17 years old, and we're playing in nightclubs with the 25-year-old the women in there, you know. So it was very, very exciting for us. We dressed all the same, uh -huh. like the Beatles, you know. It was really cool. What so, year was this, though, when you started that it band? It was like uh, 1970, you know. Oh, wow. We're like we're like 15 years old, you know. Rock and roll was getting started and all that it stuff. Was, you know, it, it, was, it was really cool. And, um, you know, so I, I went to college uh, locally here, and... Um, I went, I went out with my friend Ralphie, my best friend, and we would go to discos at night, you know, pick up girls. Oh, for sure. And this girl came up to me, beautiful girl. Uh-huh. You know, imagine that, pretty girl in a bow. <laughs> <laughs> and we hooked up, you know. Yeah. We're like, we, you know, we became, you know, lovers, you know. I was like 21, and she was like 19, and she goes, um, you're a musician. I goes, he goes, my uncle's like a big shot in the record industry. I said, what does he do? Well, he owns a thing called distributing, and they distribute all these records. I said, you got to be kidding me. So we would go out with them every weekend. They were much older than us, 10 years old or whatever, but they were lovely. Mm -hmm. And he says, you're dating my, you know, my goddaughter. You know, <laughs> what are you doing, buddy? Right, right, right. And he gave me a job in the warehouse. I was a kid. I was 21 years old. And it was fascinating. I mean, it, it was summer, and um, I could wear shorts and a rock and roll t-shirt. For sure. And I'm pushing, rock, and and I was down there for about two months, and they said, your warehouse days are over, and they brought me upstairs, and they taught me the record business, and I got, I got pretty damn lucky. Buddy. So did you graduate college here? Did you end up graduating, or you dropped out? No, I was, I was just, I was still going to school. Oh, you know? wow. And, and so I went, so when I got this job, that took it over because it was a hundred percent. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I'm talking like 40, 50, 60 hours a week. Wow, and it was great. And um, they took a liking to me, and it taught me everything in the business. And I mean, I would be on the order desk. Uh, it would be me and like three girls, and it was a big desk, and the phone would be ringing. You know, uh -huh. clock. And it would be like Rose Records or, or you know, Flipside Records, whatever record store that we call them daily. Right, right. I want this, and I, and just before like computers, but you know, I, I had to write it down, you know. Yeah. So yeah. I know all these crazy numbers. You you can ask me, um, the number of. I don't know. Frampton comes alive. The the biggest selling live album of all time. It's uh -huh. SP thirty seven zero three. How the hell do I know that? Because I wrote it down a thousand times. Well, that's the thing I wanted to ask you, though, because, yeah. like, when I hear your story and, like, I was doing a little bit of research about you, you like, you helped a lot of artists become who they are, right? Majority. Yeah. Yes. So social media wasn't a thing back then. Yeah, social media wasn't a thing back then. You were social media. That's the thing, right? Marketing, you were the marketer, marketing these people. So 
I know I looked at the your resume, which is very impressive, guys. Literally, I'm telling you, a legend here in the city of Chicago. I know that you worked with, I think, Janet Jackson. I think you worked with who else? Shakira. Yeah. I think you were I think I thought saw Katy Perry. I can go on Mark Wahlberg with yes. all these other people. Absolutely. Which is phenomenal, right? A list artist. And I wanted to ask you, this is seventies and eighties, I feel like when you started actually hustling, yes. motivating yourself. How did you market yourself besides going to these places? Well, you know, it, it, you know, it was my job. You know, mm -hmm. I was on salary, and my job was to get their records played on the radio. When I met Sting uh, a million years ago in 1979, <laughs> he was carrying his own, you know, bass, guitar, and, and amp into a into a, a place in in Schaumburg. Uh -huh. He wasn't a millionaire, you know. And we said, "Yeah, hey, buddy, what are you doing?" You know. And then he got up and he played, you know, 13, 14 songs. They had to play it again because they didn't know that many songs. It's insane. And, of course, three years later, mm -hmm. they're the biggest group in the in the world. Right. Um, Brian Adams, same thing. Jan and I knew Janet when she was 14 years old. And then she was a little chubby, cute little girl. <laughs> and then she became a beautiful woman. You yeah. Know? And now uh, we would run around together. And, you know, and we're all around the same ages, you know. So we were all developing and... <laughs> And just um, just growing up together, it was, it was it was something else, you know. And Thirty Eight Special, that rock band from, you know, the uh, relatives of Leonard Skinner and stuff. You know, wow. I mean, it was it was really incredible. And I'm so just very very fortunate, you know. And then I moved on to A um, and M Records, Herb Albert, you know, uh, with the trumpet and all that stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But he was m much more than that. I mean, he discovered these iconic um, recording artists, you know. Um, you can go online and see it, but I mean, Cat Stevens and the Carpenters and, you know, Joe Cocker and just, it was, it, they sound, it seems like a million years ago, but people are listening to them right now because they're so cool. Yeah, you know? yeah, they're so streaming their music. You know, I met the Go-Go's that way. I mean, they were, and remember, we're all the same age. We're like in our 20s, you know, and, and we went on the road together and just, it was just so much fun. And then, you know, they became famous and wealthy, you know, it was so, great. So when did you start seeing your success, your first taste of success then? Well, it was right away. You know, I mean, it was, the, I mean, the, the, the first, uh, Clive Davis, legendary owner of uh, Arista Records, who found uh, Barry Manilow and Bette Midler and all that. Okay. He signed me. I was 22. <laughs> he goes, I want you. And I said, he says, been in New York, six what's fifty seventh Street. I'll never forget it, and it was just, um, it was amazing just to be in that room with him. Mm -hmm. And by the way, when you sit with him, he's got this big mama, you know, mahogany desk, and he's got these huge pictures of him with these big rock stars, you know. <laughs> so it's kind of intimidating. I mean, like Tony Bennett and you know Bruce Springsteen and Neil Diamond, like holy moly, you know. And and they were all there, and I'm like, and he goes, "Welcome aboard," you know. And he goes, "You got hoods, but kid." And we were we became buddies, you know. So I bet after that you got that first when you got signed at 22. I bet you when you dropped out of college, all your friends were just like, "Oh, look!" They at this. couldn't believe it. Yeah, they right? couldn't believe it because you know many of them, you know, they they they, they would subscribe to like Billboard magazine, you mm -hmm. know, and they go. I saw your name in Bilbo. Go, I know. It's yeah. crazy. For all you doubters, you know, it could happen. <laughs> I no. Know. It, I it, mean, it was, it was fabulous. And, you know, going on the road with um, with with these young uh, stars at the time, they weren't rich yet. Yeah. They were, they were just hustling. They were like me, you know. We all made enough money to, you know. So how did you see the on. talent, though, which is actually... I, I like that because you have vision for these people. I and do. You, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, they didn't have success, but they had something going, right? The hustle, at least, and consistency. So what made you bet on them that they're going to be going on to the next level? Well, first of all, you know, I mean, I was an employee. Mm -hmm. And so we had a boss or two, and they said, these are our priorities. Oh. I remember one day, um, it's a great story. Um uh, I had been with Anum for you know a few years, and there was this beautiful um, a Christian singer, Amy Grant, right? Wow. But she was singing about God, <laughs> Jesus. I said, and they're going, 
get it played, Bobby. I said, I can't get that played. <laughs> so she goes, no, 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 no. So we meet in, um, like, I can't make this up. So every year there was a, there's always record conventions, right? And this one was called uh, Midwest Conclave. It's in Minneapolis, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, right in the middle of, you know, complete, pure, you know, rock and roll. And and so my my business partner, well, he's my boss, Charlie Minor, legendary. He says, Bobby, Amy Grant's flying up to Minneapolis. She's going to stay in the same floor as you. You're going to walk around. I said, oh, God, you know. And so she knocks on my door, like, you know, Thursday morning, you know, Bobby, you know, and I met her before. She was beautiful. Mm -hmm. And she walks in, and she goes, what are you doing? I said, I'm getting ready to walk you around, you know. To show your... <laughs> God, wait. She goes, what are you drinking? I said, I'm drinking a Bloody Mary. She goes, I'll have one. I said, really? And we laid her off, you know. I yeah. Said, Catholic girl, no way. She goes, give me one. I said, and we went downstairs, and guess what happened? Everyone fell in love with her. She's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Charming, talented. And then she became a star. I got it on the radio, you know. But it was a hit. It was a pop record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She yeah. Didn't talk about Jesus. No. <laughs> I mean, not, not that it's a bad thing, but no, she sang about, you know, it's like, you know, love, love song. You know? Tons of crazy stories because the 70s and 80s was definitely like a hit. It, it's history at this point. Like Motley Crue came out of there, Ariel Smith, like all these phenomenal people, legends, right? Rock and roll. Uh, I wanted to ask you before, like I switched topics. Dad, did you did you work with the Beatles or one of them or some of them? No, okay. I, I, unfortunately, my business partner did. Okay, uh, Mark Berry from AMG. I'm, I'm I'm executive vice president at AMG Corp. Uh huh. You can check it out at the bottom of your screen. <laughs> Please For sure. <laughs> uh, Mark Berry, um, our attorney, uh, Mr. Paul Schindler, uh, he. Uh, he represents Shakira, Madonna, mm -hmm. McCartney, you know, um, a lot of them. And uh, Mark Berry and him, you know, they became friends. Mark was like 18, 19, 19 years old. And he wow. said, you know, give me a shot. And he, they flew him out to London and he went into uh, Sir George Martin's uh, recording studio. Sir George Martin was the Beatles producer. Yeah, he yeah. He did all the hits, all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was him. I mean, he did it. He signed with the Capitol Records, yeah. And Mark just got lucky, and he worked really hard, and he became the the sound engineer on Live and Let Die and all these incredible records. The records. And he's my business partner now. It's, I'm very, very fortunate to know him. Let me ask you this, because a lot of controversy about it now in the youth. You don't have to answer it either, but what I'm aware of, the Beatles don't own their own music, right? How does that work when you're making these deals with these artists, you know, trying to get them a great deal, but also to, you know, you guys need to make a profit. How does that work? And how do you approach that contract to the artist? Okay, here's what happens. Just the songwriters, <clears throat> they'll always own a part of the publishing. Right. It's like half. Okay. It's cut in half. A publisher that promotes and markets it can own the other 50%. Okay. So they basically own the songs, but the writers, like Lennon and McCartney, okay. you know, they get paid on sales or radio play or TV play. Uh -huh. For instance, every radio station, every radio station, pays between six and seven cents for every song that they play on the radio. And that and and then the the, the uh, publishing police ASCAP, CSAC, BMI, they grab their little piece and then they pay the songwriters, uh, and then they pay the who owns the publishing. And that's how the money spreads out. So that's how they cut it up. Okay, so I ask you that just because like now a lot of artists are going independent, right? So they oh, do yeah. their own thing, they make their own money. Now it's different. It's way different. Radio. We don't, we, they don't really want to be on the radio no more. They want to be in these platforms. Well, they want to be on the radio, but you can't get on the radio unless your name was Bruno Mars or Beyonce. Yeah, of course. I mean, come on. So so they make their money on Spotify. Mm -hmm. You know, let's say you and I make a record. Okay. And we we pay somebody like ANG to promote it real, really hard on a playlist. And let's say we get a million spins. Okay. They pay about 3700 bucks for it. Okay. And then you and I cut it up. It'll be phenomenal. 
Okay. And and I'm pretty sure that our group, if we made like a little music group, we'll we'll do some hits too as well. You're Italian and I'm Mexican. We'll, we'll, we'll come up with something. <laughs> we definitely come up with something. <laughs> but, all right, like I said, 70s and 80s, you you were like, all this music was trending and history was made at that time. I know you worked with and you're also a great friend with Janet Jacks. I wanted to touch topics on that. How was that relationship and how did you guys blossom and then, you know, grow that friendship? Well, you know, and when I met her, she was only 15 and a half years old and she came to Chicago with her mother, Catherine, mm-hmm. lovely lady. And um, she had come out with a with an album on A and M Records, and it, you know, it wasn't great. Wasn't great, you know. And uh, was it like Michael? No, no. But. <laughs> but it was Janet Jackson. Sure. She's Michael Jackson's daughter. I mean, a sister, sister you know, little sister. So I would bring her to radio stations in town, and they say, "Yeah, bring her in." You know, of course, the first thing they would ask is like, "How's Michael?" <laughs> <laughs> For sure. And she was cool about it, you know. We have fun together uh, for a few days, but the songs weren't, they they just weren't hits. Mm-hmm. And then we hooked them up, Herb Albert did this, we hooked them up with uh, Jimmy Jam and, and Terry Lewis out of Minneapolis, and they wrote all those songs for Nasty Girl and all, you know, all those hits. Yeah. And then and then she grew up and she was, became a babe for sure know? she's like 19 years old she was like holy moly puberty yeah she, she's, whoop, she's beautiful she's beautiful you know you gotta treat the fours early on nicely because then later on you know you don't know if they're gonna turn into tens he was a kid you know Sorry, she was 15 16 17 <laughs> years old and then two years later she became a woman yeah and and she was hot and she was singing these hits <laughs> we sold I think maybe close to five million albums than that. Wow, yeah, worldwide. So you technically were managing her, like helping. I wasn't her. managing her. I was just I was promoting her promoting to get her. on the radio, and wow. I went on the road with her, and she was interesting going on road with. <laughs> I'm not going there, but it was but we had fun, you know. That's she was fun. fun. She was she was young and she was let's rock and roll. No, yeah, yeah, of course. And this was like in the '80s, right? No, uh, it was yeah. I mean, very late '80s, like late '88. 80- 88 okay did you ever get to work with michael or something with michael or no i no. never worked with michael i met him you know yeah quiet guy it was cool he was a superstar i think he's i know he's gonna top michael jackson you know maybe taylor swift but yeah it's controversial she's she's unbelievable at this point taylor swift it's like crazy private but very phenomenal also, too, so I saw on the resume also Mark Wahlberg. and I know Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg, well, here's what happened. When when I left a and Records, uh-huh. I went to work for Enigma Records, which is a a um, a label distributed by Capital, which mm-hmm. is the Beatles and Beach Boys and Frank. Beach Boys, yeah. So I, tried, I mean, a little bit. And when I went there, they flew me out and they said, you're hiring, you know, they hired me and all this. It was really great. Um and uh, Ted Fields, Marshall Fields' grandson, mm-hmm. he owned the damn place, all right? Wow. So he signed me, and he, we became buddies. He was really cool. Uh, Jimmy Iovine, which was the producer of Born to Run. Okay. I mean, classic Bruce Springsteen. And so I'm out there, you know, on Wilshire Boulevard, and I said, I'm excited about this. He goes, it's a five-year thing. We're going to put it in there, and, you know, you'll have a great parachute when you leave. And I said, great, you know. And I'm, like, really young. I'm still in my 30s, you know. Yeah. And um, I said, what do you got? We got this, we had this Spanish singer called Gerardo. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that, yeah, I can get that played. (laughs) Right? But guess what? It was Gerardo, and this guy was like, beautiful uh-huh. you know and he had the ex- hair extensions and he was a gorgeous guy right 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 and he did this song called rico suave you know yeah and it became a smash and i got to play it in chicago what sold millions of records it was in spanish spanglish so he's like one line would be in english and then uh-huh. the next one would be in spanish spanglish right? yeah yeah for sure and all that so um which is actually, you know, the Spanish music is taking music, th- the music industry in a chokehold right now in the past five, six years. Oh, it's been even longer than that. I mean, yeah, Selena so, back in the 90s. Yeah, oh, oh my yeah. God, forget it. So I went on the road with him and he was so beautiful. The girls were all over the place. We had a riot. Mm-hmm. 
uh, and I said, what's the next record? And he goes, well, we got this, he's, he's one of the brothers of New Kids on the Block. His name is, his name is Mark Wahlberg. We call him Marky Mark. Marky Mark. Funky Bunch. Yeah. And I said, oh, great. And I listened to the song, and I meet him. He was 20 years old. Yeah, he was, he was still a model, right? A Calvin. Oh my God, he was built like he was. Oh, I think he was, he was gorgeous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, he was like he is now. I mean, he's 50 now, whatever he is now. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I mean, he was like 19, 20 years old. And we'd be in back of a limo, and he'd be grabbing me, you know, he'd be punching me, but you know, we have, you know, in fun. Uh huh. He was, Bobby, this is insane. The girls went crazy over him. We sold like four million. Freaking singles of that stupid song, Good Vibrations. Yeah. Check it out. No, yeah, 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 yeah. You know the song. I know that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, um, and then he, and then Calvin Klein grabbed him for, you know, for the underwear. The underwear. Thing, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. And we laughed about it and, and I'd see him every couple of months. We would, it was, it was really cute, you know. This I was, was happy for him. No, yeah, this was before Mark Wahlberg. He was a tough little kid, you know. No, no, yeah, I know his, I mean, his he, history, yeah. He was thrown in jail and all kinds of stuff when he was like, for know, sure. He, he beat up people. I mean, he was a tough kid. Now he's, you know, now you pray with them on Halo, right? Yeah, now he has kids and now he's got kids. He's, wakes up at 4 a.m. to work out. He, oh, that, he guy, starts his day, yeah. This guy's built like he's, like he's still 19 or 30, old. yeah, 20. He looks like he looks like he's 25. He's not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> well, his routine, right? His routine is very disciplined, and that's. I feel like you need that. Yeah, I mean, you know, he's a Catholic boy, he's an Irish boy from Boston, and yeah. you know, he's got the whole thing going for him. He's he, he's very, he's a, he's a very lucky guy. Well, let me ask you this, because 70s and 80s was hectic, right? Pablo Escobar, all this party. You guys probably partied way harder than we do now yeah so what was that like with the discipline you know how did you tell yourself hey bobby you got to do this you got to perform the next day you have to work that next day you have to pull this off right how was that it was never a choice mm. we just we would be out three four times a week and i had my alarm clock wait for the phone i had a freaking alarm clock yeah yeah, yeah. in my bedroom living alone and um i got my ass up to go to work mm-hmm and I, you know, there was no excuses. Um, but remember, we were young and we were kind of bulletproof. So no matter how much we drank and all that, all that stuff, it's like, you know, you know, I felt like hell in the morning, but at 10 <laughs> o'clock, the coffee and, you know. At ibuprofen. Uh, and I, you know, let's do it again. Yeah. Because <laughs> we're young, you know. Yeah, for sure. I, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine doing it now. I, um, I know people around my age that are still doing it, and uh, they're a wreck. I don't know. Well, Bobby, when I met you yesterday, despite of like the age you told me, you're one of the few that I've met that actually your personality, you're so jolly. So besides of you knowing how to dress, because you dress better than 99% of people here in Chicago, <laughs> you actually, you know, the style, but you have charisma. You're, you're still jolly. You're still energetic. Like you, I don't know, you, you live... You have a different lifestyle, and you're just a different type of person uh, from here. Like you, you. If I saw you in a crowd, you would stick out. Like besides, like the style you have, you just have that personality. Like seriously, I'm, I'm, I say this genuinely. I get it. Yeah. And um, that's what I'm saying. Like, how do you, how do you tell yourself mentally? You know, out of all these years, everything you've done, all the people you've met, to you know, keep going. People would just retire and want to go. Excuse my language, but fuck off out of island, and you're here trying to build um billion dollar industry i imagine you know and you're continuing uh, now i met jillian a couple months ago she'll be on camera here in a minute um and it keeps me active and young um well it, it, it's also i like girls <laughs> who doesn't <laughs> i'm i like girls yeah and you know when you dress up kind of wacky you know i mean they just come up to you and they go What's your story? <laughs> they see the flash, they just, they well, smell they it. just do. They go, what's your story? I mean, you know, I went out with a beautiful girl. We were going steady, real heavy like, last <laughs> summer. She was a knockout. She was the prettiest girl in the room. Wow. She, goes, what, what you? she goes, I saw you with John there having a drink, you know, a couple of months ago. And I said, yeah, you know, I know him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, Todd Rundgren, you know, you know, whoever comes to town and, and we may run into each other. And so it happens to me, but yeah, I mean, I dress for the girls. 
<laughs> Sorry, I that's a it. perfect excuse. No, yeah, that's do it. Yeah. Just for the girls, of course, of course. They love shoes, by the way. <laughs> uh, girls love shoes. I saw Madonna was on the resume. Was she... no, no, not Madonna. Uh, okay, no, no. I know her. I met her. You know, no, no, no. I know that was Madonna, uh, but others. You know, yeah, sure. Well, they just you're on the road with them. Yeah, well, you, you know, you, everyone's 26 years old and drinks here. You, know, and you know what happens? Yeah, yeah, it just happens. And then. I mean, we're not talking to each other. It just like, For sure. it happened. This was years, yeah, this was years ago. You know, it doesn't count if there's no eye contact, right? Uh, that's what <laughs> well, I hear here. It's not cheating if there's no eye contact. That's what I hear. No, JK. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> it's, it's very good, Pedro. <laughs> but, with, but with Madonna, how how did you work with her? Or, like, how did you beat her? I didn't work with her, but you know who did? Uh, my business partner worked with her. He worked with um, her, uh, um, you know... Her disco guy, what the hell's his name? It'll come to me. You know, no, yeah, you know, um, yeah, and and she's she's all, but she's also represented by by my attorney, oh, wow. Paul Schindler. Okay, They're the same attorney. How did the friendship uh, come about? Um, we're really not friends. I mean, you know, I've, you know, I've, you know, met her on you know occasions, but how how Paul Schindler became her representation. I don't know how, how, how the hell that happened, but it did. Mm -hmm. I mean, he takes care of her like a major sponsorship. I think she's got Maybelline or Revlon or one of those, right? Mm -hmm. For like nine million bucks, you know, every couple of years, something like that. And he, you know, he hooked it up. He's he's also done Jay Z and uh, Beyonce deals. You know, it's a big deal. This good. This no, good. yeah, yeah. There's a lot of things in the you know back end that no one really talks about. You know, like the stuff you've done. You know, you're behind the scenes, but yeah. I feel like you don't get enough credit, in my opinion, that you should. Because I'm like, I'm having this conversation with you. You're telling me these cool stories. You've told me cool stories behind the you know behind behind the scenes. But yeah, you know, I feel like people should be more aware of it. Well, they're you gonna know? be. You know, um, Julian and I. You know, we're 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 gonna strike up our our personal uh, uh, podcast, uh, you know, Ladder Power of June, right? mm -hmm. about a month from now or so. The Dream Makers? Yeah, and uh, we're excited about it, and we're going to talk about all that. And we're yeah. going to have these guests come on, the ones that we just discussed. Right. Whether we're in person or we do a Zoom and have some fun with them, Jan will come on. You know, she she might be maybe on tour or selling a book or freaking movie or something. I don't right. Know, you know, so everybody's got something going on. Great right? actress, though. Um, she's a great actress. Yeah, she's beautiful, and she still is beautiful. Um, you know, any one of the Go Go's, maybe. Wow. A couple of members of Sticks. Um, they still put on two hundred and twenty-five shows or so a year, mm -hmm. and they're making money, man, for yeah. sure. Um, yeah. So they'll come on. You know, we'll we'll do our two or three shows a week depending on it you know um we're going to talk about goodness too mm -hmm. you know and how we can help people mm -hmm. and uh, tell us your story and maybe we can make your dream come true for sure we're gonna have a big following no 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 yeah i bet i bet that too and um and also too when all this when you began seeing all this success right when you're young, you know, like you feel invincible and all you think about is like, you know, maybe fame, maybe money, may, maybe all this. But in reality, when you achieve all that, it's not really all all about that. It's the people you love. That's all I hear, the entrepreneurs that I interview. So when you're in your room or when you were in your room back in the day when you had all the success and you realized it, what did you think about in your head? Like, okay, I have this. I've been here. I've done that. What's next? Like, how do you pivot? I would, I, I would just, I'm Catholic. And uh, I pray every day. Yeah, you, same. Pray, I'll pray for you tomorrow. <laughs> You're in my head now, right? <laughs> Thank so, you. So, uh, and I will. I'll say your name out loud. Blah blah blah. I, I swear to God, I don't know. I just, you know, first thing I do, I get up and I, you know, all uh, right, depending on my night, how late we're out and all <laughs> that. But I think I just, I'm grateful. You know, I still have my mom. She had us very, very late in life, and in, in her late thirties. You know. Mm -hmm. Um, me and my sister, uh, we're just blessed. I mean, we wanted for nothing growing up. I mean, we weren't rich, but my mom had two jobs. She worked for Motorola's executive secretary. In the weekend, she was the Avon girl. <laughs> Ding dong, Avon's calling. Who's my mom? 
and she was beautiful. Who's not going to buy something from Benny Tarantino? Right, right, right. <laughs> it's true. I swear to God. And uh, we had soap and a rope and stuff. You ever heard of that? You know, we had all this crazy stuff in the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No children or children to drive? I have I have a child, and uh, she just got married November 11th. Oh, congrats. 275 of us for a black tie uh, event. She goes, I want to have a little band. I go, what do you got? She goes, I found this band, but, you know, daddy, you know, 70-piece orchestra. Uh, what? It was like writing the check to Santana. Yeah, what? <laughs> it was like. I, I, I can't tell you how much. I'm like, what? Oh. It was a hell of a night. Oh, my God. We're all tuxed up and everyone, everyone thinks great. They were, <laughs> um, oh, my God, it was ball, you know. They're in love, you know. I'm so happy for my daughter. They they met when they were like 14 years old. They oh, drove, wow. I drove them to a dance. It was a turnabout dance. Uh -huh. That's when the girl asked the guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I drove them to the dance. I remember it was like Saturday night. And then... And, and Max, his his parents picked them up, mm -hmm. and then drove drove uh, you know Zoe back home. We lived on Lakeshore Drive. She's lived on Lakeshore Drive all her life since she was born. Mm -hmm. Good for her. And um, then they you know they went off and they were seeing other guys and girls, right? Yeah. You know, and they went to different colleges, right? And they come back and she's still dating this one guy from like high school. Mm -hmm. And so Max goes up there and he goes, tell this guy to beat it. And my girl. <laughs> and they got married. True love right there. It's true love. That's true love. They're in, they're in freaking love. That's, that's phenomenal. Isn't that nice? Yeah. I'm so happy for her. She's a school teacher now and people love her and I'm very proud of her. Congra very, very lucky I'm guy. I'm sure she's proud of you too for what you've accomplished. Yeah, she, uh, she calls me every day. What are you doing? You know, yeah. You still going out with that crazy blonde? <laughs> Well, you set the standards high for a father like yourself, right? <laughs> but but no, I mean we you know we have a tight family and um, we're Italian, religious. You know it is, and um, we're Italian and uh, yeah, I mean you know we're religious. You know not not to the point of you know, yeah every Sunday nauseum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah, I yeah. mean you know, I mean if if I'm not um, polite to a a beautiful girl or or you yeah i mean my mom will give me a crack for sure so oh, they, yeah. you know hey be a man yeah know? but she didn't have to because i am i would i'm you know well made you're... me a little sensitive no yeah yeah, but yeah that you know and i am but but you know i'm i tried to be cool you know yeah yeah i mean with your story it's like what i'm taking off of it you have to treat everyone nice because you don't know what they're going to turn out 5 10 15 years from now they could become superstar the people that you don't even expect or they could become the chief of police and they, do some good things there you go yeah you know we need doctors and lawyers out here man so you know not everyone could be a rapper but <laughs> <laughs> no 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 we need you know we need nice people we, yeah we live in this beautiful city and uh, it's the gone. greatest city of all time. It, but it, 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 crime wise, it's gone to hell. And um, corruption. Because of, well, you know, I mean, it's politics. They just, not to get into politics, but for half a second, they let, they don't let the, the police force do their job. Mm. They can't tackle some son of a bitch. Yeah. You know, that's. They just hit some old lady over over her head, and they're running down the alley. They're afraid to tackle them. They're afraid to lose their job and yeah. lose a pension. And yeah, God forbid, and you know they they you know they have families and all that. We got to fix it, man. With Somebody, all, somebody's got to fix it. That's because you know I, I like to get political too. You know I, I like to express express my opinion. It's it's it has to do with all these all these um, movements going on, right? Like I feel like people are getting too sensitive here and there, and so they're not they're scared to call it what it is, right? You know, if there's a crime, they're scared. Like you said, they're scared to arrest to lose their job. A certain type of people. They don't want to lose their job. Right. If I see another Mexican and they're doing something wrong, I'm going to arrest that and tackle him, right? Like if I'm a police officer, right? Yeah, I'm right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when I grew up, uh, there was a mayor daily when I was a little, real little, little guy. Uh -huh. eight, eight, nine, ten years old. He was the first mayor of uh, yeah. daily. Okay. Of Chicago, right? He'd say, shoot the freaking kill. <laughs> yeah. oh, shoot. I mean, and guess what? You, we could be walking out of a place at two o'clock in the morning. We were safe. Uh huh. I walk out of here now with my business partner. Right. At eleven o'clock at night, 
and we're looking over our shoulder. It's, it's scary as hell. City. Well, 2 a.m., right? You were the danger. <laughs> like you're, I'm walking at 2 a.m., I am the danger, you know? They should be scared of me. It was insane. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it, it's sad. So, um, you know, maybe the next mayor, whoever that may be, we hope that we'll fix it. Bobby for mayor, huh? No. Or Pedro, no, vote for Pedro. <laughs> <laughs> I got a little, little background. I mean, I qualify. So now, like, the industry is different with the, with the promoting and the music. Yeah. Who, if you were to choose, or someone were to come up to you and be like, who would you want to work with? Who would you want to promote? What artist would you want to promote? Any like musician? Anybody. Anybody new. Any name in particular? N- no. I'd, I'd be happy to meet some kid from Elmwood Park. No genre? Said, no, I just, you know, he sits on the edge of his, you know, a, you know, bed in his bedroom and his mom and dad in the other room and he's, he could be the next Stevie Wonder. Stevie, no, for sure. No, no. No, yeah. I mean, that's what you do. You just you listen to some kid that's got, you know, he's writing like Paul McCartney for Christ's sake. Oh my God. You know, Paul McCartney, yeah. Right? I mean, you don't know. I mean, do you think it's talent or do you think um, when you're picking out these people, obviously some people can be good, yada, yada. Do you, Is it mostly talent or is it a, a skill that you have to master, right? Some people are just born with this, some people are not. What do you think? Well, you know, the, the, the you know, I mean, people have written this, you know, you, you have to have 10,000 hours on stage to mm-hmm. be good, right? Yeah, maybe. You know, I mean, the Beatles did that when they were really when young. They were young and they, they would play in Germany at seven, eight, nine, ten hours mm-hmm. a night. And they came back to Liverpool and they kicked ass. Mm-hmm. They were the best freaking band in the world, you know. I mean, they knew exactly, I mean, they knew everything of each other. By the way, they were talented dudes. No, yeah. And we're talking about George Harrison. I mean, one of the greatest guitar players of all time. Yeah. Of course, Paul and John, they sang like beautiful, you know, I mean, perfectly. Yeah. Paul's voice was really high and. John's was right in the middle. And John Lennon was a legend, yeah. He was, they were just amazing. Ringo was a great drummer. I'm a drummer, trust me. Oh, I wow. Know, I know how to play. He can play the drums. <laughs> trust me. By the way, you didn't know this, but he was left-handed. Oh. And he played right-handed drums. And that's why some of the some of the mid, mid little things, that they sound like they were like kind of screwed up. Uh. Because they were screwed up. Because <laughs> he was, he was playing... He's left-handed, but he was playing on a, on, on a right side of uh, a drum, drum set. set, and so it's it was I got and John Leonard or Paul go keep that in. We'll make it work because it sounded cool. Yeah, it was fucked up, but it, but it, it it worked out really well, you know. Uh huh. It, it's it's really amazing how how those four guys got together. I mean, they were truly. They ruled the '60s. They destroyed the '60s that I know of. I've seen old videos and. They open her mouth. <laughs> he looks good, phenomenal, the hair and everything. I wish I really had his hair at that age. You know, seriously, I'm scared to go bald. You're not but, going bald. I, I, thank God, but it turned it turned white. Um, I've I've been getting. Uh, trust me, I, you know, my mother turned uh, great. She she has red hair, mm-hmm. uh, but she turned. Uh, she still dyes it now. Uh, but uh, of course, nothing wrong. But, with but that. I start getting gray hair when I was in my late 20s. Wow. Well, because you're always working and stressed. And, yeah, the, the girls dug it. And I said, really? <laughs> you know, who well, looks sophisticated? You know, I said, okay. <laughs> now, like, oh, look at it. now it's, but it's still on my head. No, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I mean, the women, women like mature guys, right? That's, that's I what I was saying. I, yeah, I guess, you know, it all depends. You know, that's, it's funny. Yeah. It, you know, you just, you have to have a cool attitude and have some fun. And So this is for a clip right here. I'm going to say this. I'm just going to say, throughout the 70s and 80s, how many, bo- what's your body count, Bobby? I want to say that right here. Like, there's, there's a beautiful woman press, and I can't say it. Yeah. But it's... It's up there? Way up there. Oh. No, I mean... More than my age? I'm 24. Double that, triple that. Times... 300. Uh, <laughs> Bobby is a dog. <laughs> I'm not alone. And remember, I was on the road with David Cassidy. Well, yeah, I was about to if say. You don't remember, you know, you, you, you don't remember him, but he was the, the, the Partridge family. They, you know, they were like this huge thing. And he was like this this pop star. Girls went crazy with him. Mm-hmm. He signed him. I was with a record company called Enigma Records. We were distributed by Capital. Yeah, yeah. You know, the yeah. Beatles and the Beach Boys and all that. For sure. Frank Sinatra. 
Wow. And so when, when I signed with him, I said, what do you got? He goes, we got David Cassidy. And I said, this guy had, had a record in like 10 years. I said, David Cassidy. I said, come on, I can't get this fucking old man. Yeah. The next day, you know, I'm in Beverly Hills or Wilshire. I don't know where we're, you know, someplace in LA. He walks in the room. He looked like Keith Partridge. Like he looked like he was 18 years old. He was like 38, you know. Wow. He's about six, seven years older than me. Yeah, yeah. And, and when he looked at me, he goes, we're going to have fun together. We went on the road together. You have no idea. The girls went crazy. Over wow. Him. It was insane. He was like, he was me. There I say it. <laughs> Several women a night. Five, eight women a night. <laughs> I said, what? Well, yeah. I was there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. We, you we didn't went, participate, we, right? Yeah. You we part- went on the road together. I mean, so there was always girls and, right, you yeah. know, sometimes you you know, they became friends or sometimes they just were. So what that lifestyle and growing up in Chicago, did you have anything to do or did you associate yourself with like Playboy, like Hugh Hefner? Or, you know, I, was mar- I was married to Pat Tomlinson, who was the head makeup artist for Playboy magazine for 30 years. Makeup artist. For- wow. I mean, she, she discovered Pam Anderson. Um, <laughs> with Molly Crew, yes, <laughs> Jennifer, you know, Jenny McCarthy. Wow. Cindy Crawford. They were all our friends. Wow. We went out all the time. So I'm assuming you had a friendship with you, or did you? Uh, I met him. I mean, you know, she, she was, Patty knew half, I, you know, she, she worked for him. But remember, he had already moved to California. Oh, okay. That's... So he wasn't downtown at all. But although he, I could tell you this, you know, Every letter, every picture, you know, in, in the magazine, he had to approve it all. Oh, wow. Living in Homely Hills, you know. Talking yeah. about women, he's definitely eating you by. Forget about it. <laughs> I mean, come on. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, you know, I, I knew all of them. They'd come yeah. up to our house sometimes if they were going to go on location. Uh-huh. We, were, we lived right across the street from Playboy, 680 North Lakeshore Drive. We lived right across the street. Mm-hmm. And some of the models would come over, and Pat would do their makeup. And sometimes I'd go, "This is gonna be a plan, right?" You know, and she'd like hit me. You know, <laughs> two hours later, they were beautiful. Wow, the power make, of the makeup. Yeah, she doll them up, and you know, I mean, they all have good bodies. You know, they got, you gotta have a good body. Yeah, but I mean, the face. I'm like, she's gonna be a, she's gonna be in a magazine. Don't worry about it. And then she'd come out of the bedroom or something. I go, wow, you know, she looks great. And then the lighting, you know, she's right there. <laughs> you know about lighting and photography. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you can make somebody, you know, a little prettier. Enhance, yeah. You know, just prettier or softer. And, yeah. And, With all this technology, you know, it's easier to catfish people nowadays, right? I guess. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah it was, uh, we had a great time. Um, um, uh, you know, I, I met Jenny when she was 18. Wow. No one. No one knew of her. She lived in the south side of Chicago, and she was a lovely girl. So I, I like when you start, you know, talking about these A-list artists and celebrities, right? Like, I always tell people, and also, too, it's like, oh, when you met this person, how was it like? I'm like, they're just people, right? Like, they're literally genuine people. I joke around and be like, they just have more zeros on their bank account compared to me. But honestly, but you take that away. They're genuine, you know? And um, I feel like people mistake that, and... Even though like you're naming all these high A list legends, like legends, they're you 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 talk about them like like it, they're at the dinner table. Well, you know, for for the most part, I met them before they, they were, became famous. Yeah, and they were working hard like me, and um, and they were for the most part they were very very sweet. Mm-hmm. How was um? I also saw on your resume on the right. Oh, Jillian mentioned Katy Perry too was on there, right? Katy Perry will be one of our guests. Oh, will be. Oh, wow. well, she she she's a um, uh, she's represented by the, our our same legal people. Okay, you know. So speaking about AMG, how do you vision it to be in the next ten years, and how are you guys approaching this, you and Jillian and other really, partners? We're really pushing our our properties that uh, we've secured for a film and TV series. Mm. We have the Joe Frazier. Uh, who was who fought Muhammad Ali for of course. four times? You know, very very famous household name. We have the rights for that. We, we've got a um, 
Um, we have a lot of properties that, that we secured. Denzel Washington. Wow. Who was born in uh, Mount, uh, Mount Vernon, New York. And that's where the NBA basically started. Mm -hmm. so we have a documentary coming out with that. Wow. Maybe in a few months. It would be really cool. I'd, I'll send you the. No, for sure. The, I the little see sizzle. It. Yeah. He's, he's sitting there talking. He goes, oh, my God. It's really cool. Um, and the NBA, of course, blew up. Oh, my God. You know. Yeah. Billions. Freaking a week that those guys are making now. And so that's kind of cool. Um, we have a a fascinating TV series called The Track. It's always it's about horse racing. Okay. Um, and it's it's really sexy. You know, I mean, celebrities own horses now, and sure. I mean, you know, rich people. All As a matter of fact, my um, of A and M Records. Uh, a was Herb Albert. M was Gary Moss. He was you know he was the executive. Mm -hmm. And um, a few years ago, he started investing in uh, horses. Mm -hmm. And he, he bought a horse, I don't know the real numbers, but, and they call it Giacomo. It won the frickin' Kentucky Derby. Okay. Wow. And the song is written after a song that Sting wrote. Okay. Sting was on our record label, right? Yeah. When he won, I was in a room with a whole bunch of people. We were out of our minds. They go, no, we're away. It was like about a 30 to one shot too. I mean, if we bet on it, you could have made a couple of bucks. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he won, he won the Derby, are you kidding me? And we're all screaming and all, and Jerry Moss, what a wonderful guy. He just passed away a few months ago. He was a wonderful guy. I loved him. I loved working for him. It was a great company. Hearing your stories is phenomenal, Bobby. What's you know, if you could look back, what's one core memory that you think of and you cherish that moment all the time? I was with uh, Clive Davis, uh, and you know he discovered he discovered Barry Manilow. Okay, and um, there was a background singer called the Harlettes behind uh, Bette Midler, and the girl's name was Melissa Manchester. She was like about quite a few years older than me. Okay. And uh, we just took a liking to each other. And um, it was wonderful. She taught me a lot. It was great. I think about her a lot. I'm just lucky to have known her. I still do. I'm a pretty, pretty lucky guy. <laughs> That's phenomenal, Bobby. Pop. Well, Bobby, like I said, I wanted to keep this between 30 to an hour, and I feel like this conversation was actually really epic. Um, thank you. <laughs> no, yeah, Bobby, thank you. Bo thank you, Bobby. Oh, thank you so much. Before we, did, you know, you, you have to see my, my business partner. No, yeah, yeah, thank you, Bobby. Yes. Business partner, we're... we're we're, we're, we're still alive. We're, we're just wrapping yeah, it up. Yeah, we're fine. We're, we're, Bobby, we're, that was amazing. I'm so I proud know. of you. I really love am. Love you was, so much. I love you. She's, that she's was my beautiful. business partner. Hi. And, and, and <laughs> she keeps me young. Okay. Of course, Jillian. We had it on the podcast Hi, already. The Look pod. how beautiful she is. Know, you did a great job, and I'm like, so that was beautiful. Thank you for sharing your stories, and thank you for just being you. We all wouldn't be who we are today if it wasn't for people like you in the industry that thank paved you, the way. And you deserve to have your stories told. And I am so honored to like have met somebody like you. And the fact that you choose me to build your stuff Good. blows my mind. I don't know what I did in this world to be able to work with somebody like him or even people like you. Thank I you. mean, I like I'm blown away. And I just she's so talented. I mean, phenomenal. Yeah, wait, wait so. you see what she's what we're gonna do together. Ooh. Thank you. You're amazing, Bobby, and I'm so grateful. You this. It's like you are so no. good. Thank you, okay. buddy. No, yeah, for sure. I, I can't it. wait. And yeah. and we'll send you some graphics that you can put on, the, you know, to, to send go me to the a couple photos links and stuff. Yeah, and, yeah. Wow. Okay. But Bobby, and we're gonna wrap it up here. And uh, okay. boys, well, this is Bobby. This is Bobby Tarantino, <laughs> the legend. <laughs> um, in your twenty shows, Apple, Spotify, uh, Apple Music's, uh, Grinder, uh, Fee Finder, uh. What's it called? OnlyFans. Anywhere you want to search it up. Tender. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, JK, guys. But also, go check. Go stream The Art of War. Shout out Hanny. Shout out Go Coast Cafe. Studio 424. Thank you, guys. And again, Bobby Tarantino.